What's up, my beautiful people? Welcome back to my channel. So today I'm gonna to be reacting to Dr. Richie lays out absolute truth to Larry Elder in epic fashion. <laughs> so let's go straight into this video. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the bullpen. In the bullpen today, we have Mr. Larry Elder, political commentator, host of the Larry Elder Show, graduate Michigan University Law School, and a lot of other accomplishments. Mr. Elder, good day, sir, welcome. Dr. Richie, thank you so much for having me, I appreciate it. Well, we appreciate you being on the show. Uh, we're going to chop it up about a couple of elements related to free speech. Elon Musk obviously has been in the news as it relates to Twitter. Um, he has deplatformed. Um, many journalists lately. And then there's this more general conversation about social media platforms and the regulation of content. I don't want to presume what you know or believe about these social media platforms and its obligation to free speech or not. So if you would give us your sentiment and I will then opine. Well, Regarding the journalists that he has uh, that he has deplatformed, he put him back on. Uh, he took a call and found out that most people did not like the idea that he was doing that. But he did it for, in my opinion, for a legitimate reason, and that is that uh, he had a stalker. Also, some people were uh, identifying where he was at a given time. This is a famous guy with a lot of enemies, and he's concerned about his security. But as to the general question. What the Twitter files have revealed, Dr. Ritchie, is that there was a pervasive uh, attempt to silence, I shouldn't say attempt, uh, 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 effort to silence uh, conservatives and conservative content. They did not tell conservatives that they were uh, bottle capping them. Uh, not only did they not tell them, they publicly and under oath uh, denied they were doing it. Jack Dorsey, the former founder and owner of, uh, of Twitter, publicly said, we are not uh, censoring people based upon ideology. Clearly they were. A bunch of FBI agents, former FBI agents, also worked at, at Twitter, uh, and uh, the the suppression of content, the interaction with the FBI, the DOJ, to me is scary. Uh, a lot of people were simply not able to get their uh, information out, including COVID. A hundred million people were thrown into poverty because of the lockdowns worldwide, Dr. Ritchie, uh, and in the United States. I'm in California, about a third of all small restaurants are now gone forever, many of them owned by uh, black and brown people, the people on the left that people on the left claim that they care about. Uh, depression was up, suicides up, opioid addiction has been up, murder is up, all because of these lockdowns. And there was a, a, a declaration called the Great Barrington Declaration signed by three esteemed epidemiologists, ultimately signed by 50,000 scientists and medical professionals and hundreds of thousands of other people saying that the lockdown was a bad idea. That document was suppressed. People like uh, Dr. Bhattacharya of Stanford, who was co-signer of that document, uh, was deplatformed. So a lot of people never heard the counter argument about lockdowns, counter argument okay. about mandates, and a lot of people suffered as a result of it. Let me respond to what you have laid out thoughtfully. You laid out a couple of elements, um, but I think I have them all. So let me first respond to the Elon Musk issue. Elon Musk, under his order, deplatformed multiple journalists. Now. He made a quote, I'm gonna read the exact quote um, when he took over Twitter. He said, free speech is the bedrock of a functioning democracy. And Twitter is the digital town square where matters vital to the future of humanity are debated. Now he's wrong on the town square dynamic. That's a legal term of art, as you know, as an attorney. But I get his sentiment. He says, okay, I'm a free speech guy. He then deplatforms journalists for what? you say was a legitimate reason. Let me read that as well. Um, it says, and this is directly from, um, I think this was a CNN uh, quote, but a series of sporadic tweets must claimed that the journalists had violated his new doxing policy. So that's what you just alluded to, that they were endangering him. However, after multiple investigations into this from the agencies, there appeared to be baseless. Um, none of those journalists did any precise real time location on Elon Musk. So that was another dynamic and all of the journalists, not all of them have been restored. Most of them have. And then to your point about uh, they are simply going after conservatives. Let me address that. Candace Owens is not deplatformed. Charlie Kirk has not been deplatformed. And you have to remember this, uh, Mr. Elder. When you engage in uh, 
a contract with Twitter, Facebook, whoever it is. Uh, you literally agree that if you violate their community standards, they have the right to deplatform you. You put your signature on that and you say, I agree, boom, and you click the button. And all of a sudden, you don't want to be accountable to what you agreed to. If you agreed, you would follow certain rules and you decide to violate those rules. Or if for some reason they believe you're problematic, they have the right to say no to serve you. Now, I do find it quite ironic that many conservatives are okay with the argument of not serving a person who's gay or lesbian. They're okay with that. But they're not okay with Twitter saying, we're gonna deplatform you because you broke our rules. You guys can't have it both ways, dear brother. Uh, Twitter is a private company. The Constitution, First Amendment, makes it clear. Congress shall make no law to establish religion, prohibiting free speech, etc. Twitter is not the US Congress. Then Donald Trump himself filed a lawsuit, called it a class action, never qualified it to be so. But he said, well, Twitter has to allow me to speak, has to allow conservative voices. Well, no, they don't because the freedom of speech clause applies to governmental operations typically. So I don't get the ambiguity here. There's a dysfunction, a duality. Donald Trump is suing social media companies saying, well, you know, they need to let me say what I want to say. And then there's a protection of Elon Musk saying, well, people can't say what they want to say. And by the way, even that doxing thing, the person who was behind it, dear brother, he was utilizing publicly available information from the FCC. So if you have a problem with publicly available information from the FCC on your jet, then you need to sue the FCC, which he did not do. All right, go ahead, what's your response? Uh, let me try to unpack at least some of what you just now said. Okay. Uh, we're bearing the lead here. The lead is that Twitter has been restricting the access to posts put on by conservatives. Okay. Uh, the string of Twitter files has acknowledged this. They did not advise the person that they were doing this. They denied that they were doing it under oath. That's the big story here. Now regarding Elon Musk's inconsistency in your view, again, he already has retreated on that and put the reporters back on the platform after saying that he was gonna deplatform them. So to me, that's just a minor issue. The big issue is the collusion between Twitter, the FBI, the DOJ, the fact that they were silencing conservative voices, not telling the conservative voices that they were being silenced and okay. publicly denying it. That to me okay. is the issue. All right, so let's talk about that. Um, I do believe that private companies have the right to deplatform individuals that violate particular rules. I don't want children to be in the same place as a person using the N word, etc. I don't want that, right? So let's go to the point you made about an affiliation of Twitter and the federal government. Uh, many major companies, as you know, uh, as a prolific businessman yourself, many major companies have some level of coordination with governmental entities. I will bring to your attention, brother, the NFL. The NFL hires former FBI directors or FBI agents to work as investigators and in other positions in the NFL. They have a lot of money, they can do that. So there's an affiliation. There's also a tax affiliation where they receive a tax abatement because of their special status. The federal government gives the NFL that coordinated status. That's another level of coordination. However, when Colin Kaepernick took a knee, when Colin Kaepernick engaged in a peaceful protest, nobody said, well, the NFL can't fire Colin Kaepernick. They can't penalize him for free speech. The NFL is basically a governmental agency with all of their partnership. Wow, guys, I think this is one of the best, best interviews that I've just watched between Larry Elder and Larry Elder and our guy here, Richie. <laughs> I'm saying Larry Elder is actually speaking points, speaking the truth here. Yeah? And uh, Dr. Richie is somehow kind of trying to sneak away from the queries or from the queries of Larry Elder. With the federal government. Nobody said that for our dear brother Colin Kaepernick. We're saying that for. Um, Politicians, we're saying it for well-connected rich white men, but we did not say it for the brother Colin Kaepernick, 
who took a knee and engaged in a peaceful protest about black and brown people being brutalized by the police. You may not like the protest, Larry, but you can't say it was not a peaceful protest. And you can't say the NFL does not have loose affiliation or direct affiliation with members of government. Your response. Uh, it's one thing to have affiliations with member of, members of the government. Another thing to deny that you were doing it. And that's the problem that I have with Twitter. They were absolutely denying it. They were suppressing conservative content, not telling people, denying it. And even as I said before, Jack Dorsey denied it under oath. As to uh, it being a private company, we tell private companies uh, what to do regarding all sorts of things. Right now, as we speak, there's a case before the Supreme Court regarding a woman who makes uh, websites for weddings. Uh, and the, uh, the Civil Rights Commission in Colorado uh, is forcing her to accept uh, a uh, offer to do a website for a gay wedding, even though it's against her religious convictions. We tell companies that they must pay a minimum wage. We tell companies they must pay a livable wage. We tell companies they must provide family and medical leave, leave pay. There are all sorts of things we do to private companies that in my opinion we ought not do, but we do it. Okay. Um, but you agree with me that Twitter is not violating the constitutional dynamic known as free speech because Absolutely. they're not the government. Well, Dr. Richie is saying that Twitter is trying is actually not trying to violate the constitution. But on the other hand, Larry Elder is trying to prove this right, Dr. Richie, by saying that Twitter is trying to suppress the voices of the conservatives. Actually, they're dividing, they're, they're dividing their own code of ethics. If you read the string of, of emails back and forth with uh, executives, many of them felt that Donald Trump had not done anything, including his speech, uh, that supposedly encouraged insurrection. But that's not the question, and I don't mean to interrupt, we brother. We, we have one minute for the next show, that's all. Okay, uh, even members of Twitter felt that Donald Trump should not have been deplatformed. There was a great deal of debate about that. Okay. And there were several of them who said that Donald Trump had not said anything that was uh, what does that uh, change? akin to an insurrection. He shouldn't that, have been. That's great, been great insight. I'm glad you know that information. Uh, because there's an internal argument with management about if they should allow somebody on the premises or not, that does not negate the fact they have the right to kick somebody off the premises as a private company. Well, it would be very nice if they said they were doing it and not denying it. That's my point, Dr. Rich. Okay, so I get that. If they lied, I think the emphasis should be upon their morality and honesty. But the issue for me is a bigger dynamic. The general issue is precedent. Is Twitter a private company? Yes. Do private companies enjoy this freedom? Yes. That's it, right? Do private companies then deny that they're doing it? And so that the consumer is unaware this is being done? That's the problem. And remember, this was an algorithm dynamic. I just want to say that for the record, the algorithm was set um, and, and people like- Humans humans make the algorithm, dog. Right, I, I get you, brother. Now, remember, the algorithm was set, but when we talk about this being a class action dynamic against conservatives only, um, you haven't, you're not deplatformed. Candace Owens is not deplatformed. Charlie Kirk is not deplatformed. Actually, actually, the the tweets for all the people that you've named, including me, were very likely restricted. Charlie Kirk, <laughs> very likely restricted. Okay, his, I got his, you. His, he, he he was even named in the Twitter file as being one of those that they were monitoring. So their their access, amazing. To each of their posts was it's a private company. Yes. You all have multiple millions of followers. You got over two million yourself. You have over two million followers on Twitter, sir. How many and you're saying that they're targeting you, Dr. stopping Rich, people Dr. from Rich, interacting with I, you? How many would I have if I hadn't been restricted? Wow, Larry, I appreciate you being on the show, man. Thank you, sir. We'll bring you back, all right? My pleasure, take care. Take care. There we go, guys, that is Dr. Rich, Richie squaring it up with Larry Elder. So guys, I leave it up to you. Do you think that Twitter is suppressing the rights of the conservatives? Let me know your take on this in the comment section. And cut me up next for another Zetro reaction. Bye.